Hello and welcome to the Orchid Saga. My name is Ilkion Wiesmaar and today we're going to talk about the Purpuratas that I have. Uh, formerly known as the Lelia Purpurata, nowadays it's Cattleya Purpurata, next week it's Cattleya Lelia Purpurata. Anyhow, it's, uh, it's uh, like I said, nowadays it's Cattleya uh, Purpurata. Um, yeah, and I have them still as Lelia Purpuratas and I'll leave them uh, like that. But I will uh, will show you the name tag so you know uh, which ones I have. Uh, this is an update. It's CareCollab and the, I'm doing an update because I did a CareCollab before on these uh, beauties. And I, if I'm correct, I didn't have all three of them. But I did have this one and this one was in bloom as well in that CareCollab. And it happens to be that it's time to do an update and uh, it's blooming uh, again. So that's a beautiful time, uh, I think, because the blooms are stunning and it's just nice to uh, show them in these types of videos. But before I go any further, I would like to mention the other participants uh, for this video as well. So uh, let me uh, grab my phone and uh, meanwhile you will have the names in the screen. And I also have uh, the links of the videos or the channels at least in my uh, video description so if you want to check them out which i highly recommend you can find those channels very easily okay that's said and done the other ones are uh, ninja orchids trish orchid live stephen van camp lewis danielle's orchid ranch dd blooms orchids 365 karen's orchids mary g orchids Orchids by the Lake, Tropical Plants Finland, Simply Orchids, etc. And the last one is uh, Fernanda Nesimiento Orchids and Succulents, who is um, the one that made this Care Collab happen. So thank you so much, Fernanda. Really enjoying these uh, Care Collabs. So thank you for letting me know and uh, setting this all up for us so we could join in. Uh, before I forget, if you like uh, to join in as well, if you have to uh, do something on social media, uh, please let us, know, let us know. You can uh, message one of us and uh, we'll make sure uh, that you will be there next time. So if you like this care collapse, uh, let, let me know or let us know and it will, uh, should be fine. Okay, you guys, that's said and done. Um, I have a link to uh, the previous one, so I have a little bit more information there, or a little bit different information, I should say. But anyhow, uh, let me uh, start with this one, because this is such a beauty, and I just wanted to show you the blooms. Let me check. Yeah, there is a slight fragrance. Not that much, but the fragrance that there is is beautiful. But look at the blooms. They are really, really stunning. Let me turn around this a little bit because we have three beautiful blooms. This is the uh, Cattleya Purpurata variety Rubra. And look at that lip. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So yeah, I ha it happened to be that I have one of these beauties in bloom. So let me first put this back on the shelf. And um, let me grab uh, another one. This is not their uh, original place. I will show it in a minute where I have them located. They are a little bit higher up. But anyhow, I also have the Purpurata variety Striata. And this one, uh, yeah, said they didn't bloom. I thought it would be, uh, well, actually it's this bulb. This is the uh, latest bulb. But yeah, it didn't make a sheet. It is bigger than the one before. Uh, it's a fairly young plant, but I thought it would be old enough to, uh, to make a spike, but it didn't. And instead of it, it make, uh, started this beautiful new growth, which is uh, wonderful as well, of course. But yeah, I must admit, I really look forward to, uh, to see the blooms on this one. The Striata should be a very beauty, beautiful uh, variety as well as, uh, of the Purpuratas. But anyhow, uh, maybe next time, maybe next update, it will be in bloom. And otherwise, it will, of course, be in one of my blooming updates that I do every month. But yeah, it's beautiful. And I have a top layer of pebbles there, but I do grow them self-watering. And I like nowadays uh, the pumice, but I'm not sure if I put these in pumice already. Let me grab it so you can see uh, what is happening inside of the pot. 
As far as I can see, I did use only pumice. And as you can see, we have a heck of a root system. I believe. So yeah, this one is a really liking uh, pumice as I do. I love working with pumice. So yeah, basically all my orchids are in self-watching. So also uh, these uh, three beauties. Let me uh, grab this one. This one is a little bit uh, older than the striata. As we can see on the rhizome, it has more bulbs, but still it's a fairly young plant. And yeah, the same story basically as the other one. It didn't, uh, there's a, a little bit of an old flower there from another plant, <laughs> but it didn't make a sheet on this one. Also didn't make a sheet on this one. This is the latest growth, but it's still, it's a little bit bigger than the previous one, as you hopefully can see. So we are doing well with these guys, but yeah, nonetheless, I would love to see the blooms on this one as well, because this is the variety uh, Paparata, and then we have Workhauserinii, a fairly common uh, known one. And I think hillbilly orchids uh, at least has this one in bloom, if I'm correct. So if you want to know the blooms, how they look, because they are beautiful, you should go uh, to at least to her channel as well. But I think more, uh, more people may have this in bloom. So uh, not just check them all, of course. I'll let, let me check them all, I should say. Anyhow, uh, <laughs> meanwhile, this is also producing a new growth as you can see it's just started uh, this new growth but it also has those new roots you can see those are very very light color very white so th these are very new yeah let me put it like this so in this corner here is a new root with a new root tip growing on the edge of the pot and that is why i hope you don't mind i do not get this out of the pot because otherwise i probably will break it and that's not really necessary. So one day I will take it out, but then that root we just saw here on the edge of the pot will be inside of the pot or at least uh, bigger. Maybe it's decided to become aerial, but then I can get it out of the pot. So I don't want to break it. So I'm sorry, I'm going, not going to lift this out of the pot, but as you can see, it's, uh, it's the same situation, pebbles and palmers. And as far as I can tell, it has a, a nice root system as well but yeah i apologize i cannot show the roots on this one and that reminds me of this one and i can see that i did repot it apparently fairly recently let me check yes january i didn't uh, remember it says uh, 23 there 123 uh, because this has the darker pebbles. And nowadays I like to use these gray pebbles because I like the look of it a bit better. Uh, but now I need to get it out and it's fairly top heavy. I need to put it on the floor. So give me a, a second please so I can uh, get it out. I have this cable tie on the edge of the pot. So it's not that hard to get it out, but to get a hold of it. And maybe you think, what is he talking about? Well, here I have a cable tie made a hole in a pot and you can put your finger in it and then lift it it's very easy so yeah this one is also in pumice as you can see and we have some roots here those seem to be a little bit older roots yeah and this new growth it's now blooming which is now is blooming and it didn't make any roots yet so it will uh, will make more but we have one from an older bulb i think yeah, it's more in the back here. Let me grab those weeds out. <laughs> we have some wider roots here. So probably this root is coming from that area. But we will, uh, we have more roots over here. We will have more roots, uh, I think when it's done blooming. I'm not completely sure. I don't take notes of that, but yeah, I think when it's finished these beauties, <laughs> it will uh, probably start out a new root system. And Maybe that is what they do, but I, like I said, I don't remember. I should take note of it, probably, but it's very handy if you want to repot them. But I didn't do, I'm not completely sure. So yeah, we have roots and that's always important, oh, of course. So yeah, let me first uh, show you now uh, a clip of where I have them located normally. So for this video, I have them here, but normally they are uh, 
up the top shelf. So as you uh, probably can see, I have my preparatus up here. Well, at least that one is very obvious of the flowers, of course. And the other two are in this corner. So very close to the roof. And I even have a light above them that is still uh, on these days. And that's not because they really need that extra light now, but it's a whole system. So down here, I need uh, the lights to be uh, on. So therefore, I also have those on. But anyhow, they don't mind. They really enjoy the extra light. And uh, to get them into bloom, I especially think you need that light. So that's, uh, that's why they are uh, on the top shelf. They really enjoy it there. So yeah, as you just saw, I gave them uh, basically as much light as I can. They really enjoy the light. And to get them to bloom, uh, in my opinion, they need a light. Uh, they have fairly light colored leaves. And that's uh, because of the, the highlight that they do get. So it's a little bit uh, yellow, yellowish green color. And, and then you should be fine. I don't, uh, don't let them get purple. So if, you, if they get a little too purple, I think that's a little bit too much or not really necessary. But that's my, op my opinion. And sometimes it just happens. And it's a little bit of the purplish color hint of it to, uh, to, the green, to the green leaves. That's not the end of the world, of course. But uh, I try to net, not to let them to get too purple. And so far, I cannot even see any hint of purple. Let me check really quickly. No, no, it's, uh, it's just a yellow, yellowish green color. So it should be fine. Even though these are not, but maybe they are still too young. I'm not completely sure. Like I said, I, I really thought I would have some blooms on those as well, but probably uh, next year, next season. So we saw uh, that uh, the light levels, we saw that I grow them in uh, pumice, in a cell watering setup. And then I think it leaves me with the feet. Well, it's basically the same. I have also a video on that as well for all my orchids. I feed them the same, well, not all my orchids. My vendors do get more feet, my cymbidiums and my the types. Those three um, do also get the same water because they get more fertilizer. It's up to 300 to 350 parts per million. The rest of my uh, orchids, including my Miltoniopsis, do get the same water as these guys. That is because I have so many orchids and otherwise I would keep up uh, mixing different uh, mixes of fertilized water and etc. Uh, I water them once a week, every Wednesday. I fill up the reservoirs if they need it. I can see that by the water meters and they get the same water. So you can imagine that already, I think, because I mentioned the Miltoniopsis that I don't feed them much. I am a strong believer, a believer of the, uh, I thought somebody was there, but nobody is there. It's probably the wind, but uh, I'm a strong believer of a weekly, weekly uh, uh, schedule. So I, uh, I give them a, a small amount of feed every single time. And uh, I believe, or I like to look at my uh, reservoir as a sort of buffet, so they can pick out the nutrients, nutrients that they need. And it's, uh, of course, up to me to keep it uh, as healthy and as fresh as possible, which kind of leads me to the next point, because in most cases, I believe, especially here on YouTube, with the other uh, growers that use a semi-hydroponic setup, some sort, um, will flush and I think I'm, the, I'm not, uh, not maybe not completely the only one but it's fairly rare let's let me put it like that uh, that you don't flush the reservoirs and that is what I do in my case so I don't flush them only uh, I, I, let, let me put it like this I flush only if my reservoirs my, the plants have a reservoir uh, that is a beer, uh, above 200 parts per million. If they don't, I don't flush them. The only thing that I do, and this is actually a, a new uh, project, project that I have going on, um, is try to keep a healthy pH in a pot. So what I found that uh, also with these guys is if you don't flush them, in about somewhere between five to seven months, in most cases, not all cases, but in most cases, you will have a uh, big drop in your pH. So it's not, not rising as it does in the beginning with the inorganic media, no, it drops. And I had severe drops. So I lost uh, quite a uh, 
quite a few argots or they did lose their root system because the pH was so far off. And that is how I learned to uh, create this, basically this system that I, uh, that I have going on. And, uh, but anyhow, I keep an eye on that pH. So keep a nice pH and I do feed them weekly. And for me it works. I have a sort of balance here and it really suits my life because especially in the summer days I'm very busy. Um, so yeah, I have a lot of orchids and that is how this, uh, this, this system started to grow basically. I had a, a plan, but it's just by experience I changed things. I try to do my little experience. Meanwhile, what happens if I do this or do, do that? Like for example, what happens if I don't flush? Is it really that bad? Because people say you uh, have not fresh water anymore, stained water, I believe you say. I don't think so, because I water them every week. So every week I put new water in that stained water, but it evaporates the water that's in there. And also, of course, if they grow well, if they bloom well, they drink a lot of water. So stained water, hmm, not completely sure. I do get what, what those people mean, but I don't think it's really stained water to be sure, to be honest. But anyhow, that is in a nutshell, <laughs> my growing system. So if you want to know more about it, I probably already have linked that video, my customized cell watering system. I'm going completely in depth on, uh, on how I grow these, uh, these orchids. But yeah, like I said, I just give them the same uh, fertilizer because otherwise it would take up too much. I have 400 plus orchids at the moment. And a few of them are not in self-watering, but uh, 380 for sure are in self-watering. So you can imagine uh, it's, it's quite a job. Well, it's not actually a job now, but yeah, it would be if I had them in uh, organic media for sure. So um, yeah, in the meanwhile, I was thinking, did I miss something? Uh, I don't think so. I really enjoy them. I really like the shape of the blooms. And yeah, I... Uh, I uh, I started with this one, I believe, just to see if I could grow them. That was uh, three years ago, four years ago, and they do, do so well. And then I came across the other ones on, on, on YouTube and I saw the blooms and I was like, yeah, I'm going to buy a few more. But I couldn't uh, buy mature plants. So that's why I started with seedlings. And maybe that's why they are not blooming yet, but they, uh, they, they, they should, I think they should. So anyhow, you guys, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comment sections uh, below and I will uh, get to them as soon as I can. Sometimes it takes a few days or a few more, but I really enjoy the comments. So uh, I will definitely give you a comment back. And uh, yeah, I think this is it. So if you enjoyed, please consider subscribing, give it a thumbs up and I really hope to see you at one of my next videos. Bye bye.